All right, we'll bring that up with this next fellow. Thank you very much, my friend. I'm talking about North Carolina Senate Judiciary Committee member Tom Tillis. Senator, very good to have you. Good to be back, Neil. Is there that antipathy building, sir, to Charlie's point that a, a number of your colleagues are just getting tired of this, what seems like childishness between Senator Corker and the president, um, that it's not productive, um, that it's got to stop? Well, I think you're right on it not being productive. It's uh, an unneeded distraction. Look, one thing I will disagree with the, the uh, prior discussion is that we're here to produce a result for the American people, and that result has to be tax reform. So we're, the discussions we're having, we'll have at lunch today, and that we'll continue to have is how do we fulfill that promise of getting the corporate tax rate down, get business taxes down, get the economy growing. I don't care who's in the White House. What's being discussed, it's all strategy. We're focused on that strategy. Um, do you ever remember a time, though, Senator, where a president has lashed out at someone within his own party, and furthermore, someone within his own party has lashed out at his president to the degree this has, you know, devolved? No, I don't. And I think at, at some point we need to get back again to the task at hand. I, I don't think we've seen it. Now, I do think that this president has appealed to a broad base of people in the last election that heard him say he wants to produce a result. But what we don't want to do is have that devolve into gridlock when Republicans have the White House, they have Congress, and we have an opportunity to get meaningful tax reform done. Then we got to get back on health care, which is something I wish we'd done in August, didn't get it done. That problem hasn't gone away either. Um, do you envision any problems at this luncheon with the president will be there, Senator Corker? Uh, no, I don't think so. I'm going to bring some popcorn, but it'll yeah. be uh, interesting to watch. But, uh, but you know, at the end of the day, I think getting people in a room and talking about it, we get out of the, 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 uh, the Twitter and social media personas and to people in a room who still are unified in our need to produce tax reform. And I think that's what most of lunch will be discussed. You know, long before their Twitter feud, as you know, Senator, uh, Senator Corker had, was considered, I guess, one of those deficit hawks. I mean, concerned about... Uh, spending too much, whether it was on tax cuts or, or programs. Uh, given the fact that the Senate budget blueprint allocates one and a half trillion dollars in revenues for tax cuts, and right now the going tab on the tax cuts that are out there is close to five trillion, how do you make that up? Well, a part of it is going to be through removing some of the exceptions and exemptions that they're working on right now, the Finance Committee in cooperation with the Budget Committee. That's how you make some of it up. But a part of the way you make it up is by having very clear models for how the economy is going to respond and to what extent we can count on that revenue uh, filling the gap. We're going through it right now, but it's going to be a combination of those two levers to get to the right place. It can't be all of one or the other. All right, so you build in a little bit of growth, I guess. Uh, I think it was your colleague, Senator Portman, from Ohio, who said minimum expectations of four tenths of a percent added growth, which would go a long way toward addressing maybe the one and a half trillion you set aside for this. But if you grow much more than that, that's all, you know, whipped cream, I guess. But what, what would you remove? I mean, the president said he's dead set against removing some of the tax benefits behind 401ks. Uh, there's also a battle back and forth of whether you stage or do in stages uh, this deduction for state and local taxes that a lot of uh, high tax states uh, don't really like that much. What would it be? I think it's got to be a combination of all of the above. I've consistently, and I think to the consternation of some of my, my uh, friends, have said that I'm not willing to take anything off the table until we sit down and we model the specifics of a package. And it's going to have to be a care, carefully crafted compromise. And if we don't go in with that in mind, then we're going to marginalize what we can do. I've been there and done that before in North Carolina. And nobody disputes the positive results by us being disciplined, making some changes to exceptions, exemptions, deductions. But in the whole, creating something that gets the economy moving, then everybody can look at this. They can go back to their businesses, go back to their sectors and model it for themselves. I actually believe most of them can be happy with what they see if we don't start pulling things off the table before the final deal struck. Senator, thank you very much. Good luck at the meeting. Good seeing you. Thank you, Neil.